This week's kick your mic. Oh, yeah. right, run. Man, say a mind, like say hi. She gonna say hi. It was ugly, Mom was sitting bro. like an old woman. What's up, fellas? What's, what's good? What's good? Yeah, y'all. Hey, look, look at good this. Last night in that blue pinch. Y'all didn't hey, start hey, off like this, boy. Mean, 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 huh? Y'all didn't start off like this. We had production crew from day one. Oh, okay. That's the cheat code right there. Hey, man, we ain't like you, man. What? You started, yeah. from, you started this, from the bottom. This is me right here. Yeah, you yeah. started from yeah. the bottom, though. This is me right here. Hey, Cream Biggums. Videos in Cream here. Biggums was. Cream Biggums. Oh, fam. Hey, but I'm going to bring that up. That's how I met him. <laughs> in a basketball in a basketball game, a charity game. <laughs> was he Cream? He's the spice. same person. Uh, same exact person, bro. Oh, shoot. My dad is a two time All American on the wall and all this. Oh, shoot. Okay. Randy? Randy Crowder. Yeah. That's my daddy. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Cause that's, you didn't know his name was Randy. <laughs> my real name, Randy. Oh, it's word? Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy I'm how like, he caught him. He said, Randy? Yeah. <laughs> and my dad, man, they went on the crew yeah, visit. He, crew. he went to Penn State. He's, yeah, he ain't shit. They got his that, dad is <laughs> My dad was a monster. His guy. dad was No, they got Y'all got that big All-American shit where they got the yeah. big 20 feet, the mm -hmm. big pictures. Yep. And on my recruiting visit, they brought me in there and they started talking to him in front of his wall. And dude just sitting there like smiling, looking all giddy. <laughs> I'm like, what up, coach? <laughs> like, turn around. Turn around, a big <laughs> <laughs> Ran the crowd behind me. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Courtney Brown was my host. Okay. Saturday night, we set up in his apartment with him and his roommate. They brought three little skinny white girls in there. We sat there and drank Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> and I said, this what y'all doing Saturday? And I ain't coming to this mother. <laughs> I was so God. I was like, man, I can't come up. And it was snowing and shit. So we messed it up. Yeah, yeah but it was, it was like four feet of snow. There was no way I was going to Penn State. So it was the snow or was it the Mad Dog? <laughs> It was a combination of all together. Combination. Yeah. Combination. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> but I swear to God. Cannon mixtapes used to go ham. It was all the Atlanta dudes. Yeah, all the Atlanta You know where he got that from? Uh-uh. From Madden. Madden, I don't know, like with the old, old really? Madden on Sega Genesis. So Rich Gannon was dropping back, and they say pass by Gannon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I promise. Yeah. yeah. They got For it from Madden. I thought it was DJ Drummer. Hey, so I'm in London at the fight. You know, I'm supposed to be at the fight. Mm -hmm. It's my job. You know, I worked in London that week. I'm interviewing fighters, Kamaru, Leon Edwards, the whole thing, right? Jesse Gaethje. And so, man, I'm walking. Hey, RC, I'm in London. I know I ain't finna see no real Negroes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm expecting everybody to have an accent. I'm expecting to be in like an episode of Top Boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you know what I mean? I turn around, it's him. Him and, him and you and Toby. Yeah. Actually. Front row too. They rich. Mm. No, no, no. Mm. Toby rich. is good friends with Oos. Okay, got yep. you. So you were in Manchester for the, for the watch party. Mm -hmm. You got to watch the worst team in football. <sighs> How, how is that? Why, going why you got to go there, dog? I just figured we start with all the sad stuff. No, nah, we don't. We don't got to do that. First of all, welcome to the pivot, Spice. Oh, we started. Yeah, we just gonna start. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't even know. Yeah, we just gonna start. Hold up, limitless. They got some cap pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. They got some cap pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, Anthony Spice Adams, Freddie T, Channing. I'm RC, people. Good to see you. This Celsius is amazing. <laughs> Cosmic vibe? <laughs> wow. Mm. Let's talk about Only the... Only 10 calories. <laughs> Let's talk about the, the cosmic vibe of the, uh, the Chicago Bears when you were in Manchester at the watch Let's party. Let's not. We you had a great time. You flew way over there with, with your wife to don't, watch don't the Bears? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm just asking. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, wow. I did. Did you feel fulfilled and content watching Matt Eberflus's uh, rendition of the Monsters of the Midway? We lost the game. We, we lost lose every game. game. We lost, we lost the game. And, um, you know, but in between breaks, we danced. We listened to songs. We sang Bear Down as much as we could because you can only do that when they score a touchdown or kick a field goal. So, you know, we did that a couple of times, and uh, everybody had a good time. So what's, what's Bear Down? Like bears are down, down, or like? <laughs> I mean, seriously, no, no, I got a, a more serious how you, question. How do you take this mic off? <laughs> you leaving? I can't. I no, can't. more serious question. Real question. 
Real question. This is not DraftKings promotion, but real question. Okay. When will the Bears make the playoff again? Mm. Over, mm. under, four and a half. Ooh. I think that's a great line. Decades four or years? Years, 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 years. Dang, really? I don't know, man. That's... I don't know. Usually you could see some things where you're like, ah, I think we just one year away or we two players away or da 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 Like, I don't know, man. I have no idea, man. But I know I've been watching the same stuff for the past couple years, man, and it's just like, dog, like we had Lovey. Mm-hmm, 10 and 6. When they right. fired Lovey, it was 10 and 6. 10 and 6. Right. So, like, I don't, man, I don't know. I've been trying to find that mojo ever since. <laughs> when... People see you now on social media. You have this huge social media following that's probably not because of the Bears mm -hmm. or because you were a football player drafted in the second round, played nine years, which is extremely difficult to do. But now, man, you, you make us laugh. You entertain us. You, you truly show your personality. And you're one of the success stories that football players aren't one thing. And people get joy from what you do, but everybody has a story. And all stories aren't rainbows and butterflies mm -hmm. all the time. And so I know we want to make people laugh and allow people to get to know you, the funny sides of you, but there's a start to that story. And something intriguing about you, you your father went to jail when you were four. Mm -hmm. And you talk about the things you remember most about that. Yeah. And you said the buzz. Yeah. Explain to me what the buzz is. So that's how they, they open up the cell. And, um, you know, it depends on if you're in the maximum security or, you know, if you get moved down. And, uh, but when he was in the maximum state, you hear that buzz and then it open up and then, you know, it's a group of inmates that come in and you got to find out, all right, which one is my dad or whatever. And, you know, you, you visit him, but you can't touch him. So he's like, you know, he's looking at how big I got, and he's like, dang, boy, you big, whatever. But he can't, he can't touch me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then, you know, you go to the vending machine, and they got, like, tuna fish sandwiches. It's like the worst food ever, man. But you buy him some food, and he just demolishes it because it's like, you don't, I don't know what he's eating there. So this is, like, the time for, and then you only get one hour. You see him for one hour, man, and then, like, you know, you take your pictures and stuff like that. This was before camera phones and all that, so you got to wait for the picture to come in. It's like, ooh, the picture of me and my dad come in and all that. So it was a rough time, man, seeing them locked up like that, man. But, you know, uh, my mom did a good job of, like, making it seem like your dad is a bad person because he's in jail and I wish he was here and da-da-da. So she did a real good job with that because I could have grew up with, like, a lot of resentment towards him. Mm. You know what I mean? But when he got out, and I think it was around, like, 2008 or something like that, he probably did, like, 28 years or something <sighs> like that. I bought him a car. I bought him a laptop, I bought him suits, I bought him like a brown one, a blue one, a black one. He was like, no, they ain't, they ain't got the neon green with the pimp stripe. <laughs> I'm like, dad, like, just take the basics, right? Because he, he a go-getter, man. Like, he worked for Ford now, man. Mm -hmm. He's on a union, like, oh, he got remarried, like, all that stuff, man. So my dad doing good right now. Though. What about the, the movies you introduced him to? <laughs> <laughs> man, we... <laughs> <laughs> we went to see Spider-Man, dog. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my dad had on a white suit. <laughs> <laughs> the movie theater. With sequins on him, dog. And uh, he had this black belt on with, like, rhinestones all over. I say, Dad, how many, how many diamonds you got in your belt? <laughs> it was like 273. <laughs> <laughs> he said, count them. I say, oh my God. I said, Dad, my dad came from upstairs. I remember this like it was yesterday. He came upstairs, had the suit on. I say, Dad, where you going? Like, we going to see Spider Man. I say, where you going? He said, to the top. <laughs> <laughs> I got to appreciate it. He's going to the top. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, man, I love that dude, man. <laughs> it, it's crazy. I think about it when uh, you were talking about your dad. Yeah. Because I like to mess around. I like to joke. And somebody asked we me. We know. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody asked me recently, like, what was that? Was that creative? Was it born into you? Like, you always mess around yeah. just to entertain. I thought about it. And having a single mother, 
raising three kids, she was always on edge. She was, you know, it wasn't a very joyous time all the time because she was stressed out. She's trying to keep yeah. us all in line. Mm -hmm. Do you think not having your dad, having a single mother has has made, I don't say made, but has created the funny man and the, the humor that you have? Oh, no question. No question, man. I always found myself trying to entertain folk so they don't want to come back over to the crib because I ain't got no brothers and sisters. It's just me. So whenever somebody came over, I would be dancing and be like, oh, man, you heard the one about the three people who went into a bar, man, oh, man, da, da, da. Like, I'm doing all type of stuff. I'm falling down stairs. I'm doing slapstick comedy, like everything. And they like, man, we always have a good time, man. We go over to Anthony's house, man. Let's see if we can go again, man. So I think that's where it all started, where I started, like, entertaining folk. And I always, I've been this same size and height since I was 12. <laughs> I promise, dog. <laughs> I, prom I went up to Little League to their practice, and they said, hey, what's up, coach? Talking to me. I'm like, all right, I'm not one of the coaches. Like, I'm, I'm trying to play. And so they're like, all right, get on the scale. Get on the scale. It's like, to be continued. Like, this <laughs> joint is like, they had one of them old school scales with the dial go like this. Man, they was like, you ain't about to be playing no football out here. Like, I think the weight limit was probably like 140, 130. Yeah, no I'm, shot. I'm 298. I'm 12. And I'm like, see, Ma, can't play. <laughs> I, never, I never wanted to play. Yeah. I was like, nah, I was listening to my cousins. They're like, man, you get hurt, man. You know, it hurt your head, like all that stuff, man. Nah, you don't want to do that. So we, I'm from Detroit, so that's bad boys. That's Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars. We playing basketball. We rolling the, the rim out. Yeah. You know, so, oh, I come a car, man. Hold on, hold on. That's We out there like that. Yeah. So football stuff, man, it was just like, I, I ain't going to do that till I get to high school, maybe. Maybe. My mom dropped me off. So in Detroit, there's three top schools, Cass, King, and Renaissance. You got to take a test to get into them. So I took a test to get into King. I said, I want to go to King. So upon my mom figuring that out, she just took me to King's practice and dropped me off. Dude, I had on some jorts, probably <laughs> like, you know, some white Air Force Ones, tank top. Like, I wasn't ready to be in nobody's practice. She like, get in the car. Like, we going. And I'm like... I'm in the car the whole time. I'm like, want to do this, man. I might want to go. There ain't no food, bar. I might do that. Nah, she dropped me off. She said, go introduce yourself to that coach. I get out the car. I turn around like, my, what? <laughs> the door still open, so the force of her hitting the gas is what closed the door. So I go introduce myself to the coach, and he like, walk a lap, run a lap, whatever. Da, da, da. And then, uh, so after that, we all get together, everybody like, we doing jumping jacks together, like all type of stuff. So after practice, my mom picked me up. I'm like, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> we got to be back at 2.30 tomorrow. I want to get here at like 2, though, all right? So, you know, I got to be here at 2. Coach said 2.30, I want to get here early, yeah. all right? So, but man, I gave her a big hug, dude. Yeah, man, I've been playing ever since, man. It's Spice, you talk about uh, you could have had resentment for your pops. Yeah. But obviously you didn't. And uh, we hear you know, so many things about Detroit. They're not always positive. Yeah. You know, a lot of drugs, a lot of violence. Uh, when you hear that, how were you able to circumvent or navigate the, the negative influences? You know, being coming up in a single parent household, yeah. you know, it, it's not always easy. Yeah. But your success story or the story that you have today, how were you able to just avoid not falling to some of those you know, negative stigmas that we tend to hear about? I didn't want to let my mama down. I didn't want to let her down. I didn't want to let myself down. We seen a lot of my uncles go to prison, my dad in prison, my cousins back and forth in it, like, you know, a lot of my relatives. Hearing my mom talk about it and like hearing her cry about it and having to go see her sister while she in jail, you know, people on crack and like all this stuff. So I was like, dang, like we going through all this stuff. I don't want to be the cause of that too. So, you know, I always tried to make sure I got good grades, that I studied, that I was just like, you know, somebody that people can be proud of. You know, we found football and I was like, Football is like a form of entertainment. Like, I have been entertaining folks all the time, and then, you know, I found football, and I, I knew that I was going to end up playing because I was just like, just how the way you feel about it, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything that everybody hate, like, I love. Like, I love, like, I'm a nose guard. 
Don't nobody want to play nose. If you <laughs> if you went to a three technique and you said you playing nose, oh, <laughs> come on, I'm trying to get paid. I can't, I can't, the double T? No, fam, no, don't nobody want to play nose because it's hard, man. Well, yeah. I loved all of that. Like, let's go. Like, 300 pounds, three, 350, come on. Yeah. Like, let's go. Like, you got to come. You are you 6'3", six, 6'5". Six, I'm 5'11". <laughs> I ain't wearing no thigh pads. Low man win. <laughs> if I'm wearing thigh pads, I lost. Y'all, you can't hit me in my thigh. I'm, I'm 5'11". You got to come see me. Yeah. Dog, so I used to be in them trenches, man, just skinning and grinning, man, just trying to get it, man. Spice, but, you said you shook your mother's hand right after the first practice. What was it about that first time on the football field that sold you, though? I know you're saying now that you love the, the dirty work of being a nose guard and nobody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. But what grabbed you in that first practice where you were like, Moms, thank you? Well, it was the togetherness. It was like, it seemed like everybody on the team was my brother now. You know what I'm saying? I just met them. Like, I'm, I ain't got no brothers and sisters. So now it's like, Everybody all in unison, like we doing jumping jacks. Everybody like, yeah, we gonna win the states this year. I'm like, like let's go. <laughs> and I was coachable too. Like I was playing offensive line, bro. I promise you, on everything I loved, dog. The coaches, I didn't know nothing about football. I knew like you know running back, quarterback stuff, but it was boring to watch to me. Like they're going to run or they're going to pass and occasionally kick the ball. Like, but. It's, it was nothing to it for me. Like, I want to watch basketball. It's more fast-paced action, like all that. But when you play, oh, man. Like, if I'm mad at somebody, I get to take it out on somebody else, and I got to worry about the police? <laughs> man, <laughs> sign me up twice, dog. But, man, not having no brothers and sisters and then getting with people that's, like, all, like, everybody come together for one goal to win games. Like, that was just, like, beautiful to me, dog. Like, I'd never really seen nothing like that, never experienced it. So I'm like, I got to come tomorrow, and then I got to come the day after that. Like, it's a lock. Like, I'm in. Like, my mom would tell you, like, when the season was over with, like, I used to have a hard time. She was like, you know, you can't play again the next year. I'm like, next year? <laughs> that's, that's, man, that's so many months away. Yeah. Like, I used to have a hard time when the season was over. I was like, man, I ain't going to play football no more, man. Like, <laughs> we don't got to run 45 count. We got to run 46 counter, man. You know when the, the, the running back, he's back there, right? He take a fake step and get the... I'm explaining this thing to my mom. We got to do a double team because double team not really a double team. He's going to try to come up to the linebacker, right? Try to seal him off. And my mom like, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Like, so I'm trying to break the game down in my mind. Dog, I'm telling you, I was in love, dog, from the first day. Hey, Chang, you sound like uh, when Booby Miles got hurt, though. What I'm going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I can't play football. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Young did that. Yeah, yeah. And he had to, he had to speak the word. I can't mouth. play football, man. <laughs> <laughs> When did you know your size had to affect you? Because, like, you 5'11". My you, mama wouldn't let me. But at some point, you, you balled because you went to the top school. Ball daddy went to Penn State with a top school. I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to go. You weren't, you weren't supposed to go to Penn State? Cause I wasn't a prototypical type of defensive lineman they had there. Mm -hmm. Like I was 300 pounds. I was short. Usually, you know, he go after the guys at 6'2", 280, stuff like that. And then I show up. Me and Jimmy Kennedy. Jimmy Kennedy was 412 pounds. Damn. Yeah. So Jimmy's 412, and then I'm 300, and we come in with the uh, we can do spin moves and all this stuff. We're like, nah. We go up there. It was all bull rush. I'm like, dog, we we going one on ones. I hit somebody with an uh -uh. and he's like, uh uh, you gotta go full speed, <laughs> bull rush. And I'm like, fam, you cannot do that for four quarters. Like you're gonna be dead tired. It's like running up a hill. You can't wrestle with. Mm, you can't do that all game. Yeah. You're gonna get a hernia or something. Man. <laughs> he's like, no bull rush every play. No. I'm like. All right, man. Joe Sarah, man. Mm -hmm. God rest his soul, man. But yeah, that's all he wanted to do was bull rush. Then Coach Johnson came along. He was like, it's one-on-one -on -one basketball, big guy. I'm like, yes, yeah. thank you. It is. Like, now we're doing spin moves. And now, you know what I'm saying, now it's a change. Because at first, Coach Johnson only had the DN. So he had Courtney and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Brad Schioli, those guys. But 
when he got the whole defensive line, it was a change, man. Like we were skinning and grinning and doing all kind of stuff out yeah. there, man. But it was just even meeting you, man. I played with Vonnie Holiday and Kevin yeah. Carter and them boys. Them Big jokers boys. are monsters. Yeah. And even meeting you, like, damn, that was you never felt like your size was a, was no. hurt you at any even the league. I'm from Detroit, dog. Like we were seeing that all the time. You see giants all the time, man. Yeah. Dog, I remember. <laughs> I remember, dog. I was about nine. I was about eight or nine. It was this dude who stayed probably seven houses from us, and uh, he was a big. He was like me. He was like he was twelve, but he was big, man. And uh, we was playing basketball over our neighbor's house, and uh, he had fouled me or something. And you know, people be instigating. Like I don't think people like liked them like that. They knew I was kind of like a big fella, so they was like, this, this is an even match. Yeah. So, you know, they're like, man, you gonna let them, you gonna let them follow you like that, man? Come on, man, I got your back, man, if you, if you wanna squabble. So they're like, man, you gonna let him follow you again like that? Man, if that was me, man, you lucky. You ain't done. So he followed me again, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to the crib. My uncle bought me this nugget, like this gold nugget uh, ring. I put it on, go over there like, Blah! And I'll run to the house. Bam! I'm booking and I'm like, Corey, big butt ain't about to catch me. Go in the house. <sighs> Close the door. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I did it, man. Woo! Ah. So my mom like, boy, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I was red. I came in the house for this minute. Uncle Hersh gave me the ring. Like, bah! Hit him. Oh, got up out of there. I'm like, nah, nah, you ran from him? I'm like, yeah. She's like, no, 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 no. You got to go back out there and fight him. I'm like, she like, you don't run from nobody. Mm. I'm like, so then she say, either you going to fight him or you going to fight me. So I was like, hey, Ma, you might have to square up. Like, Corey, <laughs> Corey is big. He, this is Corey I'm talking about. I, 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 I thought about squaring up with my moms, man, for a good 30 minutes. They took a while. <laughs> Like, I was, I took that literally. Like, ma, <laughs> we might have to go for what we know, man. It might be some furniture moving up in here, man. But my mom, she would never, like, let me, like, so a lot of uh, my cousins used to play basketball, take their shirt off. She'd be like, no, you take your shirt off, too. Hmm. You know, I had the man boobs and all that. <laughs> Dog, my nickname growing up was Fat Back Grease Meat. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat that. You ain't answering that. Wait, you Say walking away, somebody called you, that you turn around. Wait. I put it on my letterman. Fatback grease me? I had a first and a last name. Usually you get a nickname like Ray Ray or Dookie or something. Fatback grease me. <laughs> that was my nickname. Who gave so, you that name? My cousin. <laughs> My cousin Wasil gave me that nickname, man. That, that is so out of pocket. It gets to the point where you, they be like, hey, fat back. And be like, dog, stop, dog, stop. Like, we out at Red Lobster, dog. <laughs> 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 you can't even call me fat back. So, you know, after so long, you'd be like, what, man? What, dog? Dang. So, my nickname is Fat Back Grease Me, dog. <laughs> hey, bro, you um, you talked about your <laughs> you talked about your love for football, uh, but you also have a an extreme love for music. Did that come from Detroit being the hometown or the the, the birthplace of Motown Records? Mm -hmm. And were you always the guy back in high school, Pop Warner or whatever, were you always the guy that got the team hype doing your dances and all that? Because I saw you on tape in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I know that what was, you brought to the table. That was great. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I think, you know, be, me being from Motown had something to do with it. You know, listen to the radio all the time. And you got, you know, Temptation, Smokey Robinson, Barry Gordy, Michael Jackson, like everybody. And... You know how it is growing up in the house. Like, my mom is playing Regina Bell, Freddie Jackson, mm -hmm. Earth, Wind & Fire. We got to do that when we clean up the house. Right. Mm -hmm. So you start listening to all the songs that you hate. But then when you leave the house, you start to end up, like, gravitating back towards the stuff that you hated listening to while you had to clean the house. Mm -hmm. So I listen to Anita Baker, and I'm like, oh. I remember having to clean out the closet, listen to this, whatever. Then you hear Luther Vandross, and you're like, oh. You start listening to all this stuff. Like, my mom used to have a good time listening. Then you start to understand, like, dang, you know, my mom was, like, you know, 26, 28. Mm -hmm. You know, she just wanted to have a good time, you know, drink some wine or something, have some friends over. And now I can kind of understand, like, because parenting is so hard, man. Mm -hmm. By the time you get to the end of the week or your work week, like, you just want to relax. 
And so I think that's where, you know, my love of music started coming from, especially originals. Like I love like people doing sampling, but the originals is just so much better. I peeped that on your page, but you have Spice Adams and then you have Anthony Adams. Oh, What's yeah. Spice's favorite genre of music versus Anthony's favorite genre? <laughs> oh, Anthony, Anthony be listening to like R&B and smooth jazz and, you know, uh, all that, but Spice is more like, he'd listen to some gritty West Side Guns, some <laughs> Freddie Gibbs, NWA Ice Cube type. Yeah, that's that guy, man. And it's definitely two different people. I'm a Gemini. So, you know, you got Anthony Adams and Spice Adams. Like when I when I box in the gym, <laughs> I don't be listening to none of that R&B stuff. Like I be, it'd be something dark, something that I would tell my mom all the time. I say, well, ma, cause I don't, I don't like to feel good when I work out. I like to, I like for it to be miserable. <laughs> Everybody got their thing, right? You peed on yourself. <laughs> Fred, I don't nobody know what you were doing. You were running over folk. I, I'm pretty sure you was listening to N.W.A. or some, Ghetto Boys, probably. A little bit of everything. Yeah. But so, some Florida stuff. More, I, more so Florida you, stuff. You, you, Sade. Wait, what? <laughs> Sade. Yeah. yeah. You, cause, like cause you a Kappa. Sade. Cause you a Kappa. Kappas. So every that, Kappa listened to this. Oh, Sade. I forgot you. Were, you wanted to bro. He's an Omega. Oh, yeah, I can only do that because hey, my back about to so so lock Chad, up. So bit. you you like that more than what we do is what you're telling me. That's you a make fun of me. Move. Ah, ah y'all roll y'all. Nah, we don't they, do nothing with our shimmy. How you shimmy? Y'all do hey, y'all little shimmy. Y'all do y'all man. Shimmy, y'all got y'all. Can y'all have a little? Nah, I like the shimmy. How it go like that? Whatever you want. This cosmic vibe is very delicious. Call me. Sparkling fruit punch edition. <laughs> hey, Spice, that's, that's the audio. The camera over here. Oh, my fault. My fault. I don't know. It's, it's, the lights are so bright. I don't know. This one right there, though. Hey, ah. hey, Spice, you know, well, I mean, it figures that since you got your name from, uh, what, you had the straight back braids when they gave you Spice? Oh, dog. So at the time in high school, it was like seven or eight Anthonys on the team. And I was a freshman, so they like, Dog, I always get the nicknames that I don't want. And so they was like, man, <laughs> it's, it's too many Anthonys, dude. We, we got to get you a nickname if you're going to be on the squad. So I'm like, I don't know, man. I already went through this. Like, my nickname, they find out my nickname is Fatback Greasy. It's no, over for me. You almost made the joke come through my nose. <laughs> hey, he was about to say Fatback Greasy. I already went through, through this, man. Nose. I don't want to have to go through this again. Like, it, it don't get no better from Fatback Greasy. No, it, it only gets better. No, it from don't. Fatback Greasy. There is no worse. We had this dude on a team named Dead, Dead Man Walking. Because every time we run, he'd be. <laughs> Like we we like got form and everything. Dead is just like we call him dead for short. He's be like this. Dog. Be like, Coach be like, he look like a dead man walking. We used to call him dead. <laughs> oh, ruthless. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I didn't want a nickname. Yeah, not from Martin Luther King Spice High School. Bad. Yeah. I know it ended up not being bad, but I had these braids in my hair that resembled the rapper Spice One. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So they was like, "Yeah, we're gonna call we're gonna call you Spice." So I'm like, "Nah, man." Like just Anthony's cool. Like, let's just stick with Anthony. So, you know, about a thousand times somebody called me. I'm like, man, what, dog? Like, dang. So then I became Spice. Then we played, uh, I played offensive line. So to alert me that I was pulling, they would say, Spice, Spice, the main ingredient. So I was like, dang, that's, that's kind of fly, man. I don't, I don't like that, man. So it was like, ever, ever since then, it was cool, man. I was like, all right, I can get down with this. You mentioned your mother you know, told you take your shirt off if you hooping and the homeboy's hooping. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you said you didn't want the man boobs out. You know, I talked to Chan and we've been trying to get to the, to the root of his comedy. Mm -hmm. Cause his comedy's a little raunchy, mm -hmm. right? So we've been trying to figure it out. And he was like, well, it could be like the insecure person sometimes has to have comedy. He talks about his mother, but like a lot of cats that I know that got funny were like, not that attractive or mm. 
a little chubby. Well, that's, that's not me. No, you're a handsome guy. <laughs> <laughs> you're a handsome. You're a handsome. That's me. You can barely get your leg up. What? You're a handsome guy. Yeah, but, but you know, I get it there. He was 300 I get it there. But, but you were, but you were bigger. This is, this is 285 doing this, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, 330 at wouldn't have been able to do this. <laughs> hey, so like, would it be? Cats would talk about your size, stuff like that, and like oh, the only yeah. way to back him up off you is to go back at him. Yeah. Is that how you kind of learn to, to spar? Of course. Yeah. Of course, man. Like you, you know how it is. Like, you know you're gonna have the fat jokes. It's like. Dog, it's it's evident. Like, yeah, I'm fat. Like, okay, what else you got? It's kind of like Eminem and Eight Mile. Like, yeah. You yeah. Know, I know everything you're gonna say about me. Right. Yeah. But let's talk about how yellow your teeth is. <laughs> yeah. Like, you 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 laugh like this. You don't want nobody you want nobody slowing down from the traffic, huh? <laughs> like, you know, we just just going in, man, at lunch or at practice, like everywhere, man. So, you know, growing up in the inner city, like everybody gonna always have jokes, man. And once you grin, you win. Yeah. So we used to just just have battles, man. You know, we used to call it capping. Some people call it joning. Call it some capping, people, yeah. all type of stuff, man. So what what y'all call it out in Florida? Y'all call it joning? What's that? Like when you mess with people? Yeah, like yeah, people just ranking. crack jokes. Ranking. 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 Yeah. Ranking. Yeah, ranking. They call it roasting now. The roasting. Kids. Yeah. 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 I yeah. be helping my kids. I give them roast. Dog. No, so uh, I be helping my kids. Out they was with trying them. to get my son in trouble, and uh, this is when he was in middle school. He in high school now, but um. The principal called me up to his office, which felt like I was up there every week with this guy, man. So I come in there and the uh, principal's like, I got to talk to you about Anthony. And I'm like, man, all right, what, what is it? So he's like, we found him in lunch. And, uh, you know, it's a group of guys around and he was talking about people's mothers and things <laughs> like that. So if you can, just, just have a conversation with them. And so I'm like, I'm sitting there waiting, like, Okay, but why why am I here? Like why why did you call me here into the office? And he's like, Yeah, so if you can talk to him about talking about people's moms. <laughs> like, dog, that's that's what we do. Yeah. Like you brought me here because he was they was like capping on, like joking on each other. I'm like, that's yeah. when you riff off your best stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's when you're in lunch. That's how you test it out. <laughs> I, I had to explain to my son, you could talk about their mom because you don't even know their mom. Yeah. So you can call it whatever. Yeah. If you ain't fat, I can't have a fat joke for Your you. Your mom is going to always wear combat boots. <laughs> Your mama wear combat boots. That yeah. was that was yeah. it. Yeah. Dog, that was, yeah. We almost had to have a fight at three. <laughs> my mama don't wear no combat boots. I'm about to go get my ring, <laughs> put my ring on. Like, it's about to go down. My mama don't wear no combat boots. I seen the closet. She ain't got one combat boot. <laughs> she got one combat boot. My mama, be, my mama fly. <laughs> my mama don't wear no combat boots. But yeah, man, that's that's where it all started, man. Just you know, laughing and joking with people, man. And especially in the locker room, man. You can't beat that, man. Like, and then going to the Bears. Oh my God, that was like a breath of fresh air for me. I was with the Niners. Niners drafted you. And I remember it. our first year, T.O. was there, Jeff Garcia, Garrison Hurst. We went seven and nine. Then the next year we went two and fourteen. The next year we went uh, four and twelve, and then we went seven and nine again. So then when I came to the Bears, it was like this was the year after the Super Bowl. So I'm like, but we about to go back seven and nine again. <laughs> I'm like, dog, I didn't get to the playoffs till like year eight or nine. I went to playoffs and we beat Seattle. Then we played Green Bay in the NFC Championship, but that was my first time ever Spice, going to I have, the... a, I have a secret for you. <laughs> what? So, <clears throat> we went to the Super Bowl that year. That's the year Aaron. Dog, we would have, we would have. That's a lie. Dog. That is a we lie. We would have ran y'all off the that is field. True. Anthony? Yeah, you, Fat back grease You me? on the show with Jay? <laughs> Fat back grease. You on the show with Jay? So Jay was gonna carve y'all. Right, sure. Carve. He was gonna throw one and hit us in the face mask. A, a couple times, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it was been hey, some carving so going on. As you way. know, you know how it is. So we played the late game that mm -hmm. day, and y'all know how it is in the locker room. When you're getting ready for the game, you're not paying attention to a TV, any of that. We are watching the TV, cheering for the Chicago Bears, because you, you remember y'all was gonna get us. Well, our, our defense was, y'all had a good defense. Y'all defense was raw. No, we were the best defense. You remember? Okay. We were number so one. So if y'all was number one, then we was number two? No, Green Bay was number two, actually. Their defense was? Yes. Okay. Well, so, we was number three. We're top five. <laughs> <laughs> no, your mama wear, your mama keep, wear combat top boots. Top <laughs> just keep your mama wear combat boots. I can't get away. <laughs> hey, fellas, the season's hot now. 
I mean, there's barely any undefeated teams left. But DraftKings Sportsbook, our partner, I mean, they always undefeated. And any new customer using the promo code PIVOT, you make a $5 bet, you instantly get $200 in bonus bets. And I've been telling y'all for a long time, right now there's some offenses out there rolling. Y'all got to work the overs. And then the game, you know what that's called? That's the same Even game parlay. parlay. You know what it is, baby. Even bigger payouts on the same game parlay. And all you need is this mobile device. Check it. If the sports betting is not yet in your state, don't worry. They still got you covered with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. You still can get in the game and make some bread. Make it happen. Hey, let them know, man. Any new customer using the promo code PIVOT, a $5 bet instantly gets you $200 in bonus bets. Back to the show. Hey, you mentioned your, your, your son's name is Anthony. All yeah. of your children. Name start with A, and so does your wife. Oh, you do a little you research. Met your, this guy. You met your wife when you were 14. Yeah. Were you capping with her too? Uh, <laughs> like, like, yes, actually, yeah. Me and her go back and forth, man. We have a good, that's my best friend, dog. Like, I always tell people, like, make sure if you marry somebody, make sure that's your best friend, dude, because I've seen, you know, annulments. I've seen people get divorced a lot, and it's just like the common denominator is like, be y'all got to be best friends, man. But I've known her and her family uh, longer than I haven't. Mm -hmm. Like you know, we were 1994 when we first met. I was playing ball with her brothers, and so I never like pressed the issue with her. Like I liked her, but it was just like you know I didn't want to make it awkward. Like her brother is right next to me. Like he plays center, I play guard. Like hey, I don't want to get in my stance and be like yo. <laughs> What's up with sis? Your sister, man. She, <laughs> she was cheering for her brother a little bit. A little hard, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, tell her, tell her I said, What's up? Like, it'd be, it'd be awkward, dog. Right. So I never really pressed the issue. But once I got to college, I was like, I, I kept calling her. I call, And she's a pharmacist. So I would call her on a Saturday. And she'd be like, oh, I got, I'm at the library, like, studying. I'm like, on a Saturday? <laughs> like, come on, man, for real, dog. Like, knock it off. But yeah. she, she would be studying, like, for real, for real. And uh, she ended up, like, going through college, uh, being a pharmacist at FAMU. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she got a condo, like, all of this stuff, man. But I had, one time I had called her, and I was like, this was, like, right before camp at uh, Penn State. And I was like, you know, I'm trying to come down there. And she was like, this was, this was instant messenger. Well, you know, you'd be on instant messenger. Then they did the little yellow man with the little running dude. <laughs> so I'm on instant messenger like, yo, I want to come down there. You know, I got, got my Pell Grant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got, you know, I got 1500 you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I could, I could spend a flight. So I, I, she like, yeah, you can come. I'm like, bet. So I, I'm like, I'm about to hit enter right now. On this flight, she's like, yeah, you can come down. Boom, hit enter. I go down there to see her. And she thought, like, me, she was in Tampa. I'm in Pennsylvania. So she thought when I went down there, like, I was going to try something with her. And I'm like, nah, like, I honestly just want to come down, chill with you, whatever. Get, like, a different scenery because this camp about to be crazy. You know, we, this, this is when we got two a days. Mm -hmm. Like, it ain't like how it is now. Like, we got, we have full pads so much. If you erased it off the board, you could still see it. Right. Like, ain't no, don't ask. It's full pass every day. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to chill. So she was still working. She'd go do her pharmacy work. And me being the way that I was raised, like when she left, I'd be cleaning up the house. Like I vacuumed, did the dishes, like all those other types of stuff. So she came and she was like, why, why didn't you do this? I'm like, well, if I'm gonna be staying here, like I want it to be better when I leave or like better like how it is if I'm here staying here. So, you know, she was like, dang, like, okay, whatever. This is weird, you know. That boy uh, got a game. I'm sleeping on the couch. Like I ain't, I ain't trying nothing like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You sleeping on the couch and cleaning. <laughs> yeah. What you went down there for? <laughs> Just to chill, man. I want to get on, down man. there, see Florida, you know, get the heat, you know. Just because camp, I'm going into camp. I understand I'd that. I'd rather do anything else mm -hmm. than, than camp. At some point in camp, you're going to get camp eyes too. Yeah, that's true. And that's the pivot cool. is a safe space. We pride ourselves on that. And you can tell us, <laughs> was it really the best friend thing or is it, 
she tapped that and popped your cherry and turned you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I mean, wow. I would expect that. Since, 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 since his wife. wife. What? Since his wife. <laughs> since 14? Yeah. So look, that's Penn it, State. It, it, ain't no way, it ain't no way you was no virgin in college. I'm not saying that because I'm a virgin. I'm saying that because I didn't want to try anything with her. He's oh, a okay. gentleman. Now, trust I, me. I thought he might have been scared of the good. No. Listen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fat back well, grease. On the <laughs> from, from Detroit. <laughs> now, I, let me let me give y'all the facts. Let me give y'all the facts. Give you stats. From, from, from Detroit. Uh -huh. East side, okay. to be exact. East side of Detroit. Played football. Mm -hmm. Got a scholarship. Yeah. Q dog. Ar, 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 ar. <laughs> <laughs> I got a chance to go to the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Trust me. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> Y'all need to try it. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust You see me. I got all that out of my system. A little sexually conservative. Ah, okay. I got all that out of my system. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice girl. I got you. I know her mom and my mom are best friends. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Uh, uh, it's, it's bad. It's yeah. just bad taste to try anything. Mm -hmm. So. Don't do nothing. I'm there for the whole weekend or three day, four day weekend, whatever. Go home after that. She, she was crying at the airport when she dropped me off because she was like, I was, I was wrong about you. Like, I thought like you would come down here and be expecting something. And I'm like, all I expected was a good time. You showed me a good time. So mm. thank you. I appreciate it. Mm. Worked like a charm. <laughs> <laughs> Worked like a charm. So that was game. You see this, how this black sweater is on me? Mm -hmm. This was my wife after that. <laughs> <laughs> she good. Dog. Loved you. Got her. <laughs> all Got it took her. was a weekend. That's all it took, man. <laughs> all it took. Next thing you know, phone. Dang, hello? It's Saturday. Ain't you supposed to be in the library? You ain't in the library? <laughs> What's up? You ain't in the library no more, huh? <laughs> hey, Spice, man, you know, your wife has, just to kind of stay on it, has played a big part in what's been for you and supporting you post-career as well. Yeah. Um, I still remember seeing the first video, the <laughs> NFL uh, free agent video. Yeah, yeah. And she, it, she taped it. Really? She recorded that. And it, it, what's funny about it, Spice, is like, it was so relatable to me mm -hmm. because you try to make it feel like it's your decision that you not play, <laughs> right? Like, cause I, was, cause I was cut after my second yeah. year, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when people would ask me, they'd be like, man, you don't want to play again? Oh, well, you know, I prayed that God gave me an opportunity and I, I played two years, but in my heart, I was like, yeah, I want to play. Yeah. I want to get that Just gotta call. say the right thing. Yeah, but <laughs> when you made that video, were you expecting from that point to now have a career in entertainment, or are you just like, man, it'd be cool to make this video, have some, Chris Harris, yeah. talk to him. Mm -hmm. You know, he said you were always funny, grabbing the PA, going to Northwestern, in and, and buses and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but when yeah. you made the video, were you making the video to start this career, or was it just something to kind of get you through what, was, what you were going through in the sense of, I don't have a team right now? In hindsight, I, I was. I didn't know that though, like I was, at the time, I was just making a video just because I felt like it was fun. It was something to do. Like, everybody had stuff black people say, stuff white people say, stuff big people say, stuff skinny people say. I'm like, don't nobody got nothing that's, like, going through what I'm going through, this NFL free agency. So I was like, I'm going to make this video, and, uh, you know, just to have fun or whatever. And then I called Chris Harris. Show him the video, and I was like, dog, should I put this out? He like, yeah, dog. Like, <laughs> he'd been telling me for years. He's like, man, you built for social media. And I'm like, dog, this is stupid. So you formulate your thoughts, and you tweet it out, and then people judge you off of, like, how you think, how this is your opinion, and people judge you off of that? I'm like, this is stupid. This, Twitter? Like, this is a little bird? I'm not, no, <laughs> this is dumb, man. Right. So what he would do is, when I walked in the locker room and when I walked in the training room, he just started recording me. And then he would tweet it out. And then he would show me, like, all the interactions and stuff like that. And he'd be like, like, look at how many people talking about you. Like, look how many people viewed it. Look how many people laughing. Mm -hmm. and he was like, dog, you built for this. And I was like, man, all right, bro, I'll I try something. So, you know, by the time I was done, I started talking to Chris, man. He's like, dog, you got to put that out. He was like... We see it all the time, but the rest of the world don't get a chance to see it, and they don't know how funny you are. 
So he was like, just just keep doing the videos, whatever. So I was like, all right, that. And then next thing you know, I did the White Castle like retirement right. video. And then White Castle called me like the next day. And what's so crazy about the whole thing, when I did the video, I had hit enter on the keyboard to so it can go on YouTube. It went live. Then ESPN assignment desk had uh, emailed me. They like, hey, can we do you mind if we use your video? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. That's, that's fine. And uh, so I get up out of my office. I go into the living room. Trey Wingo is already talking about it. I'm like, dog, this is crazy, dog. Like, I literally just said yes. And they talking about it 30 seconds later. I'm like, dog, that's crazy. So I go back into the uh, office. And now I'm checking my email. I, I got Yahoo. Like, I know some of y'all probably still got Yahoo. You know, y'all elder statesmen. You probably got a Gmail, but before that, <laughs> yeah, you probably had Yahoo. Gmail so guy. on the main page, it's like Anthony Spice Adams, greatest NFL free agent ever. I'm like, dog, like this is crazy. Like it just went bananas. So then I was like, dog, I might be on to something with these videos. So I kept making videos ever since then. And then I got the call to do a Great American Bacon Show over in the UK with ABC. Then I did Ballers with The Rock. Yeah. Then I did a show called Detroiters on Comedy Central, and then everything just started opening. I was doing like videos with Kevin Hart. Like it's just been going crazy, man. And one thing after football, I've seen with dudes that retire, they still chase money. Mm -hmm. Were you chasing money? It got to a point where I wasn't turning it down. <laughs> <laughs> but even like the, like early on, what, what kind of money were you making straight up? Like that video when the yeah, Trey Wingo Yahoo. Were you really I wasn't making, making no money off of that? Yeah. Nothing. Zero dollars. So what's the point of putting another video out if you didn't make no money off the first one? It was fun. And obviously people were talking about it. Like the first video I made, it was a lot of local stations like talking about it. And they was pushing it out, whatever, da, da, da. But I think the one that broke was the retirement video. So then I was like, dang, I'm, I must be on to something. Like, because I'm shooting the videos, I'm editing them, like all of that. I'm having fun with it. You know, it's something to do. You know, I ain't out here, you know, sometimes you get bad habits when you get mm -hmm. done playing, you know what I mean? And now I got the support of my wife, you know, I'm like, let's let's keep doing it. Cause at first it's a little different, man. You ain't running out there to 75,000 screaming fans. You don't have a set schedule. You don't have to lift weights and do all this stuff. So my wife, she could have been like, dude, you need to get out here and find a real job. Like everything is going out, ain't nothing coming in. Yeah. But she was just like, let's let's try it at this angle right here. Like, no, uh, the lighting is off. Let's go this way. And she got a baby strapped on her. <laughs> <laughs> like we still got kids. Like my kid is dangling from one of them baby Bjorn. <laughs> baby Bjorn. She in the baby Bjorn like this <laughs> while my wife is recording, dog. Uh. I did a video. Uh, Rap is my first love. In that video, my the baby is on a baby Bjorn while my wife is recording. So I was like, dang, like that's my ride or die right there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But it all started from me going out to Tampa and just like chilling. And I, I got her. <laughs> it worked, Channing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, slow, that's slow motion there. It works. Like Channing, would you have slept on the couch? I ain't sleeping on no couch. I'm a grown man. Would you have sleep? It was 300. How, how much you weigh? Yeah, about, about 290. Man, you work that couch to fucking death, man. <laughs> you can't sleep on the couch. I'm not sleeping on the couch. I don't have to touch you. You can sleep on the top of the cover. We can have separate covers. I'm not sleeping on the couch. Well, you know, I ain't gonna lie. The first night, I didn't try to sleep on the couch. But I slept in the bed, or but I wasn't trying nothing. I was just yeah. like, you know, just kind of chilling, whatever. And then I was, I kind of like noticed that she was like uneasy about it. Mm. So then I was like, all right, I don't want it to be no friction and nothing like that. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable, so I'm going to just sleep on the couch. And then her dad is a pharmacist, too, and he don't live too far from him, so he come over. <laughs> he came over there, and he was like, oh, look at here, man. A real life Nittany Lion sleeping on my couch. This, this is the couch where I usually sleep. You know, uh, now I come in there, and then you're in there. Oh, yeah. That's, that's how he talk. <laughs> where he from? He was like, I knew. <laughs> I, I, he was like, he was like, I knew when I seen you on the couch, you were the one. Yeah. I knew she was going to end up marrying because that, that was my spot right there. Right there on that real life Nittany Lion right there on the couch. <laughs> see, see, the problem when you slept in the bed, you caused the friction. Uh -huh. When I sleep in the bed, they want friction. Ooh. Oh. You know, because, yeah. you know, you, you see me yeah. like, the way I look. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> but with me, she she kind of figured, like, she didn't want to give me that satisfaction mm -hmm. oh, yeah. to be like, you came all the way up here. 
and you think like you think this is going down like this, da da da. No, no, I ain't, it ain't cut like that, da da da. But you end up backfiring on her. Like, I mean, you flew yourself out. I did <laughs> like with, if, with if, the pale grand money. Yeah, if you if you flew yourself out, you're not guaranteed any action. That's that's very true. <laughs> that's that's very point. true. I see. Hey man, on this show when we do the pivot, we like to get people into the space of mental health. We all know that there are things that could bother you or thoughts that you can just take over your mind. And so for those people who are dealing with those things, they should go to betterhelp.com. That's a place where they can walk through these things and find their way to healing. Yeah, and I just recently started therapy, fellas. Just everything going on, the wife, the kids, the, the new jobs and all, and it was just so much in my mind going on. I lay down, I can't, I can't, my mind can't rest, so I want to talk to somebody. And BetterHelp is there for you. It's online, too. So like you're saying, we all run around. It's online as well. Yeah, I think you should, um, you know, really consider it. Better help, you know, you want to make your brain your friend, right? So get out, talk to some people. The best place to do it is in the comfort of your own home. All you need is your device. You don't have to move around. You don't have to go to, to too many places. You got better help right here at the, in the palm of your hand. Make it happen. Listen, to get away from your thoughts, go to BetterHelp. That's BetterHelp.com slash The Pivot. Better H E L P dot com slash the pivot. Hey Spice, you uh you 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 touched on briefly um how some guys can get in their post careers. Mm -hmm. You know, guys can kind of lose themselves. Yeah. Uh, it seems that you've had a, a a seamless pivot in your post career. Your content is very entertaining. You got you got Bigums, you got Spice. Two things. Do you really enjoy making people laugh? And is this a form of therapy for you? Yeah, it is. That's good too. Um, I like. I don't like people around me like uptight, and you know. So I, I was like that in every locker room that I was in. Like I remember we had games and people would be quiet. And I'd be like, man, is this a funeral or a game? Like you know what I'm saying? Like we playing the kids' game, getting paid the king's ransom. You know what I mean? Like I need a little bit more liveliness in, up in here, man. So I think it is like a form of therapy for me. It puts me back in a in a place where I'm comfortable and where I like to have a lot of fun. And I think you get the best me, you know, when I'm able to just be myself and just like entertain. So that's why I was saying like being with the Bears is like a breath of fresh air. Like you got Peanut Tillman, you got Tommy Harris, uh, Lance Briggs, like you got a lot of jokesters on the team. So I was just like, once I got there, it was just like, cool. Like I could just be like a kid, man, and just be myself here. Like anybody got to worry about being uptight and just because we losing and whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, uh, being with the Bears, man, was like a breath of fresh air, man. But it's definitely therapy for me, man, and just get me in the space of where I, I want to be, where I could like affect people. You know what I mean? And I think that's important to me to have people around me. It's just like, dog, when he showed up, man, he was we had a good time. How often does Cream Biggums go to therapy? Because his game suck. I know he got a <sighs> I know he got a yeast infection. And that logo the logo, is that a split or he jumping the hurdles? Oh, this is, you know, him shooting the jumper, man. <laughs> it's Cream Biggum shooting the jumper, dog. Yeah, man. How your feet? They got and the your three strikes. Spread. I don't I don't know, man. I don't I just do what my body tell it to do, man. Like, I don't know, fam. But you see people like Cream Biggums all the time, man. They don't lack any confidence. They go out on the court, you give them the rock, and they shooting that thing. Like they Steph, but they not. <laughs> and it's nothing you can do to rattle them. You know what I mean? This like it's the rim fault. It ain't they fault when they shoot the jumper. You know what I mean? So you see people like him all the time, man. They got the, the high-waisted shorts on with the Rex Beck glasses, man. And they they coming down the court talking about ISO. I, like, what? You're not about to shake nobody, man. Hey, like LeBron said Kobe was. He's doing like, <laughs> that means everybody get the hell out of the way. <laughs> but we're going to end here, man. I thought Freddie T was going to get to it, but yeah. he had a better question, actually, than, than this one. You know, we ask people their biggest pivot is something that Freddie T started doing when this show started. And for you, this one hits close to home for all of us because you went through a lot of the things we have. Mm -hmm. You know, you got an opportunity to live a dream. That dream goes away eventually, and you have to find a new one. What would be, for you, your biggest pivot in life, the thing that you remember the most or the thing that impacted you in a way that it's always shaped you going forward? Mm, that's a good question, man. I think... Uh... 
you know, what I'm doing right now with social media and working with brands and, and things like that, like that's a that's a huge pivot. But I'm like relishing in my role as a dad, you know, with my dad being locked up when I was four. Like I never got a chance to see him at my games, mm. you know, high school or college. He finally came to a game in Detroit in like 2010 or something like that. But other than that, like he was never there. Like when I made like all my major decisions, like me going to Penn State, like me doing this, me getting drafted, like he wasn't there for any of that. So I wanna be there like every step of the way for my kids, man. Like my son made a four from one goal line stop, dog. And I'm, th this is school right here, Stevenson football, man. I'm volunteer coach on the team. I'm out there coaching up the D line, you know what I'm saying? Showing them different moves, how to work the double team, like all that stuff. So seeing him make a four from one goal line stop, tackle the guy in the backfield, slam him down, ball come out. Dog, I'm on, I can't wait till he run off the side. I'm on the sideline, like, come on, come on. <laughs> come on, come on. Dog, I went and clotheslined this guy. What is this right here? Rotator cuff? <laughs> that mug, it hurt right now, dog. Like, I went, I said, ah, yeah, dog, ah. Next thing you know, I don't even, like, feel him no more. Like, he's, like, on the sideline sitting down. I'm just, I find myself there, like, yeah. They're like, you got to get off the field, coach. Like, they about to run a play. Dog, I was so geeked, dog. But my role as a parent, dog, I be at the cross country meets with uh, my girls. My girls be running, they do all type of stuff. If you living in our house, you gotta do an activity. They doing water polo, then they doing basketball and uh, cross country. And I be at all of them things. Like, and my girl, she's like, <sighs> My 12 year old, man, they pass her the ball. She act like it's hot potato. Like, like you right up under the rim. They pass her. She's like, uh. <laughs> like, what are you right there? Like, shoot the ball. I'll be on the sideline. Like, hey, Amaya, let's go. Come on. I mean, I'm travel here for that. I got to go. <laughs> like, so I'll be at the games, like, just going in, man. But Pivot, being a dad, bro, it's like, it's the best job in the world, man. So rewarding, man. So. I just always try to be there for the kids, like no matter what it is. Like one of my daughters is in a band, like I go to the recitals and all that stuff, man. So just being present. You know, I think we have these experiences in our childhoods and in some way they shape our decisions yep. as an adult. You know, there are people who didn't have fathers who don't learn or don't take that and decide to be a father as well. Mm -hmm. And you, did it the other way. You know what that longing is like to have someone there, and you've made sure that you are. Man, I just want to say thank you, bro, for stopping by. Like this was, this was dope. It was fun. It was deep. We got a chance to to share like a locker room. But just keep making people laugh, bro. But more importantly, keep doing what's the main thing to you, and that's just being a good dad. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate you, bro. man. Appreciate, appreciate y'all, man. Proud of y'all, <laughs> man. Do my thing, bro. I bet yeah, that flirt. I bet that Montclair wasn't clean on you though. Yeah, it was. I know you weren't clean. You know what? At first, they couldn't, I couldn't fit it. <laughs> so I had like, you know, I, all of this was showing. And then they had got the seamstress. Seamstress got me together. <laughs> they had to sew his thing together. They, they, took, they, cream, they took two yeah. of them. Yeah. Ain't no question. He's going to gonna do like this. He's going to try to take the charge. He's going to try to take the charge. Hold up. Limitless. They got some guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. They got some guy pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up.